Now, Sandwip is a remote island in Bangladesh without any state-provided electricity. Cut off from the mainline electric grid, it relies on solar power and has one of the highest densities of solar power usage in the world. In a new documentary called Off the Grid, a young solar engineer introduces us to those who live in this lonely place. Today I am joined in the studio by the director of that documentary, Meghna Gupta, and the researcher and geography PhD student, Rehana Federus. First, let's take a quick peek at Sandip in Off the Grid. Guys, thanks a lot for coming in. It looks fascinating. Rehana, this was a result of your research trip. Just tell us a bit about how it all came to fruition and how you decided um, you wanted to go there, why you went there, and why you decided then to make this documentary. So, like, I was always interested in, like, development, and I'm from Bangladesh. Um, so when I started PhD uh, and, like, um, the project itself was uh, about renewable energy, so I started actually doing uh, on, like, urban electricity use. But what I found that, no, I need to tell more about the rural story. So then I, I got this um, island story, then I ended up going to this island. So Shondip is a very disconnected uh, island. And it's uh, you can say that it's solar island. Everybody is using solar. So they really have a very um, limited access to electricity. Um, and yeah, so it's a kind of fascinating place to go and see how these people, solar users, are using solar energy in their everyday life. And the fact that they're using solar en energy and not they're not on the grid, how does that change life for them there? Um, they never had actually uh, electricity, so they have very limited um, electricity. It's only in official areas or administrative areas. Rest of the island is just like um, dark. So when solar energy arrives there, now they started using lights and like mobile phone. That's the two things they can use so far. So, and it's they have like with the solar home system that they use, it's only four hours backup. So it's a kind of very uh, tricky thing to do everything in four hours because you have only four hours electricity. So I guess it's strange coming there having known about electricity before that, but for them, they know nothing different. They're excited about you know using solar power and, and what they can and what they can get from it. Yeah, they do. They don't have actually, but they often they come to the cities, then they can see actually what is electricity and what is life there. So they actually know that, how is life, and how they can get uh, from electricity. But knowing that they know that that's uh, only they have. Um, so yeah, it's now they know that there is no way to get um, electricity because it's so disconnected, remote, and that's the one they have. And uh, Magna, you directed the documentary, obviously. What was the inspiration behind that? What, when you, um, what made you think, this is something I want to make a film about? Well, I went out there and met Rihanna while she was doing her field work. And there were two things that really sort of struck me. One was on the way to Shondi, because it's, it's quite a journey getting there. The captain on the ship asked me why I was going there. And he said, he, he just couldn't believe that, that I was, I was going to go and spend the amount of time I was shooting this film because he said, anyone who's ever experienced a hospital is really scared to be here because with the kind of electricity that they have on this island, you can use it for certain things, but things we take for granted just, just don't, don't really exist yet. I'm sure they will, but not yet. And the other thing was that um, basically, I, I found that the people who used the electricity most were the women. And I think that 
women and energy is something that needs to be really be looked at a lot more because an inequality in electricity for women means that development's really held back for them because they don't often have the same mobility as men do. So what was the biggest challenge while you were filming it and how long were you there for? So we were there for about four weeks because we needed to sort of, um, it's a very small community so we needed to spend time and make sure that the community were happy with us filming there. Um, and basically we, it, it, we talked to, to many women to, to try and find, you know, what their story was in all of this. And I think the fact that they have a mobile phone is something that's really important for them because it keeps their families together as all of their menfolk go and work jobs where industrial electricity exists. And what are you hoping is going to be the, the result of this documentary? What are you hoping people are going to think when they see it? Because it's beautifully shot, but is there an overarching message that comes out of the documentary? Yeah, like we really want to, like, there is a few places, uh, solar, because it's so disconnected and there is no way to get um, electricity uh, line. So solar is the only one option. So in that way, uh, we are hoping to get out of this documentary that, okay, uh, there will be many people who will be seeing it, policymaker and people who can invest. And so that they, it could be more accessible because still now, though it's a international donor funded um, program, but still now it's very expensive. It's not accessible to everyone. So how we can make it more accessible to everyone who live in like rural areas, who live in the dark. That's one thing we want. And on the other hand, like how technologically, how the whole program can be more useful in a sense that at this moment they have only four hours. How can they make it uh, so that those rural users have like longer period of working hour and this stuff. So we are really hoping to like um, to get from the film. Well, it's certainly very interesting thinking about life without electricity and I'm sure it'll be a very interesting documentary and people will really love it. Guys, thank you very much indeed for coming in and sharing your story. Thanks a lot. Thank you.